bright. So bright. I have a cool idea for an intro. What's that? Like I'm already through, filming, but go for it. I like threw these cards at you. Like, choo -choo -choo. Look at our little frogs. You can throw them if you want. I'm okay. Frogs. It's a daddy and a mommy washing their baby. <laughs> Look at that big old toes. Do you want to throw cards at me? Yeah. Okay, do it. All right, let's get down to business. To defeat the honey. Okay, we're here. It's Thursday afternoon. What are we doing? What's our next project? Well, would you care to introduce yourself? Our next project, or one of our next projects. <laughs> My name's Courtney. I don't usually sound this way. I have asthma. And it is the spring, so. The allergies be allergen. Uh, it's really, it's the cold. Or the it's, cold. It was like it got warm and then it got cold. It did. And like my body liked the warm and it doesn't like the cold, so. Um, we're gonna make a garden. We're gonna make a garden. I am a Hufflepuff. <laughs> so we're trying to do this kind of um, inexpensively in a way, just to sort of make do with what we have instead of, you know, we could go buy a bunch of metal or you know a bunch of really nice stuff to make these beds out of but it would be expensive That's and expensive wood called pressure pressure wood no the other one cedar cedar oh yeah. yeah we could build it out of something that would like last forever and it would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars and we're not we don't we're not trying to spend that kind of money so i brought home a bunch of pallets the other day with the and i have more to bring home from work with the intention of you know pulling them apart and using them to make beds. And Courtney the other day was like, hey, do you have any, or before I bought the pallets home, she was like, hey, do you have any like scrap wood? And I was like, like not any treated wood because I don't just have a lot of treated wood laying around and I don't want to build it with non-treated wood. Like I was gonna, you know, put a coating on this so it would hold up. And then we're down here in the driveway the other day getting ready to go shopping last night. And she goes, hey, what's this giant pile of boards here? And I was like, well, they were for something else. I kind of, you know, they were their old ceiling joists from a project we demoed last year, and I was intending to use them for something that I ended up not using them for. But these have been these have been sitting in the driveway like this for probably about six to seven months, or close to that. So they look fine if you just, you know, look at the tops that have been exposed to the air. But if you flip them over. They are a little nasty, so I am going to clean them. So I'm gonna get out some sawhorses and um, scrub them down with vinegar to help kind of kill the mildew and any mold that's started forming on them. And then the weather's gonna be really nice out tomorrow, so I'm gonna set them up to dry all day tomorrow. Um, and then Saturday it's supposed to rain all day, so I'll have to get them inside. But that's, that's step one of getting these beds ready to go is you know, forming the edges so we know where to, you know, dig out dirt and move dirt and get ready to start planting. So, that's my project for the evening while there's still a little bit of daylight left. That's what I'm about to start working on. And then there'll be more to come. This is going to be multiple video series, of course, because it'll take a little while for us to get through all of this in our, you know, evenings and weekends and such. Um, but yeah, it's time to get started cleaning some wood. Next day, 
I'll give you one guess which board was on the top of the stack when I started yesterday. It's kind of crazy how much the UV rays from the sun will fade wood when it just sits out for, you know, six months or so. You can even see the difference on an individual board like that. See the very clear line where there was something sitting on top of it. Or down here on the stack that I haven't touched in the last six months, where when you move this in out of the way, you can see how much that end has faded that's been exposed. Well, I got uh, those seven boards done last night. Um, still have three more big ones and then a stack of smaller ones that are two by sixes to go through, plus this little chunk down here. So probably about halfway, or maybe a little less than halfway through everything yesterday. Uh, so I'm gonna keep going a little bit this afternoon. Alright, got all the boards stacked in here on the saw horses with a, a couple more leaning up right there. It's going to rain for the next 24 hours so I wanted to get them in there where they could continue drying out instead of getting saturated for the next 24 hours. Because um, I need them, I wanted to dry out good before I uh, start the process of sealing them. So after they have dried out sufficiently, we will come back and get them set up and start sealing them. Got the boards back out drying in the sun. It rained really hard last night and this morning, so everything's still got to dry out a lot more before we can start sealing anything. Yeah. Courtney's doing some weeding. Yeah. And me. Yeah. And Lindsay. And Holly's supervising. She's our boss. She's the boss because she has a book. Or so I hear. <laughs> You're supposed to do your stuff. I'm, I was trying to do my stuff. So it's been about 72 hours since I cleaned all of these boards. They spent part of part of one day in the garage because it was raining, but they have now been sitting out getting a lot of sun and drying out for about 48 hours, give or take. I've already rotated them once just so that they can dry out more evenly as the sun kind of, you know, bakes across the side of them. So I'm going to do that again real quick and let them sit out for about another 24 hours. But I also want to check the moisture content on them real quick uh, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So we have this handy little moisture meter that we've had on our trailer, our work trailer for quite a while. And you open it up, you got your meter. And then this handy little reference sheet, which you can probably see there's a lot of different wood species listed on there. So all you do is just pop this cover off. And now you've got a handy little moisture meter. So it works by these two prongs right here, which hopefully you can see well enough. Yeah, there we go. Uh, those, of course, dig into the wood. And it's activated by this little black button here, depressing. You can see on here it's got a couple different groups. Group 0 and 1 are, as you see here, for reference scale for building materials and then drywall. So most everything I use it for, we're using it on 2 and 3, which is all of these various wood species and I'll try to do this so that the display will actually show up in the sunlight but all you do is just depress this and you'll see the red light come on there on the two and three which means we are reading correctly so we're just gonna come up to the wood and press in and we'll get our reading so you can see this this piece of this particular piece of lumber has a moisture content of 14 percent so we can go around and check few different ones and we'll probably get slightly different readings so let's see this one's got 22 percent for whatever reason it's a little bit more wet check one of these smaller ones over here and we're back down to 13 14 percent and if we check the end of this one here we might get a slightly different reading about 15 so i'll use that meter at work sometimes to check the 
moisture content of things like flooring, studs and a wall or a ceiling before we start, you know, covering them up with drywall. Make sure our, you know, our building structure is not too wet if it's gotten rained on while we're building it, stuff like that. So these are, most of these are down to where I feel comfortable uh, in that like 12-ish 12, 12 percent, 12 to 15 percent range. I'd feel comfortable going ahead and sealing them. But I'm gonna let them, it's not gonna rain until, you know, about two days or a day and a half from now. So I'm gonna let them stay out here baking for a little bit longer um, and hopefully they will continue to dry out more. So I'll check them all again, uh, basically tomorrow evening before I put them away to get them out of the rain.